Okay. So um, we'll pray and then we'll start. Okay. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you that um, you are with us. You are for us. And uh, you are the one who leads us into all truth. Father, we thank you for the Lord, wonderful practical wisdom that is there in your word. And uh, Lord, we thank you for all the wonderful things that you've been looking at, Lord, and learning all these days. And even as we continue to do that, Lord, we pray that you'll, um, uh, Lord, equip us and uh, Lord, strengthen us in the area where we feel that we lack the expertise, Lord, where we feel that, um, Lord, that we need a little more help. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would, uh, you would enable us, strengthen those areas, Father God. And uh, yes, Lord. We just commit uh, that into your mighty hands and we commit today's class also into your mighty hands, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sorry. Sorry about that. I think I'm getting some, something from the kitchen. <laughs> uh, just irritating my throat. Okay. So we've been looking at um, uh, working with people. Okay, so last class we were looking at uh, uh, people uh, just like all other resources, right? Or all other things that are valuable, um, which God entrusts to us. People are again a treasure. People are, um, right? when you look at uh, people through God's eyes, we see that uh, they are precious to Him and He values people. And people are a resource because, um, you know, when God gives us a vision, God gives us, um, you know, sends people to be part of the vision. And um, the thing is that we, it's it's good if we recognize that. And, and so, you know, um, uh, the greater the task, uh, you know, uh, the, the more uh, help that we need, the more people uh, to, to finish the task. And uh, the way God works is always... Um, he, he sends people across our ways in, and in fulfilling the vision that God has for us, you know, to help fulfill that vision, uh, God sends people and, and as people uh, join together with one heart, one mind and, uh, you know, work to fulfilling that vision, their own personal uh, life vision and calling, you know, gets fulfilled as well. So that's the beauty of uh, the way in which God, you know, uses us in ministry um, where we partner with one another and in doing so, our own life's call, uh, life's vision uh, that he has, you know, called us with is, um, is confirmed or is fulfilled, right? Okay, so um, today, uh, let's continue with where we left off about people, uh, resource being people, and so being able to have that, that skill, the ability to, to deal with people, to manage people. Like people are a resource and uh, we need to value, we need to steward that resource, we need to manage that resource. So we looked at several things last class. Uh, we looked at how um, in order to work uh, with people, we need to first understand the value of people. We need to understand that people are important. We cannot, a ministry is about people. Any work that you take, you know, we have to uh, interact, uh, deal with people, and they are also key to our success in the sense where we are may be lacking in skill or expertise, you know, people will have the skill and ability. Right? And that's how uh, teams work. That's how successful teams are successful, that where everyone's skills and abilities are valued and they work together, right? So, um, so in order to work together with people, now there are, it, it's not easy, right? People have very strong opinions, maybe strong likes, strong dislikes about certain things. So to work together, we need to have a common vision. So we talked about vision and how important uh, for people to be part of the vision, to to recognize the vision, right? To recognize that this is the vision. So for me, which means that we as maybe spiritual leaders need to communicate that vision. If this is what the vision of the church, the ministry, you know, this is the big picture where all of us are heading to. We need to communicate that, share that, reiterate that, which means repeat it so that people don't forget it, 
right? And uh, and also work towards the vision. So we need to be able to communicate that, repeat that, uh, and make sure people remember that. Okay, so that's the thing. And so if people are not aligned to the vision, then it's better that they don't, you know, join and uh, Otherwise, it's it's going to be difficult. Like so, it's and they themselves will you know uh, will stop uh, because they don't see eye to eye. They don't agree with uh, with you know that emphasis or this is what the ministry is about. So maybe they are called to do something else, right? So uh, we saw the importance of vision. We saw the importance of uh, uh, you know uh, delegation. Okay, one was organizing, which means organizing people. Um, uh, you know, getting them uh, uh, around that common goal, around that common vision, communicating communicating that to them, making sure they remember, etc. Then we saw uh, the whole th uh, thing of delegating. Okay, uh, so when it comes to people, uh, and uh, we need to learn to delegate. What does it mean to delegate? It means to transfer responsibility, transfer tasks, right? Hand over some of the things that you are doing so that you can do that one thing that that only you can do right and you can do it well right so that the others can take care of the other thing and in delegation we are creating opportunities for people to serve in delegation we are allowing people to grow in their ministry in their skill um grow in leadership maybe you know if we delegate that leadership to take care of a team when you when you give them the responsibility they are you know, growing up to be leaders. And so many wonderful things happen because we delegate our responsibility, right? And we also looked at, you know, how we should delegate. We looked at about nine things, right? To uh, uh, how we should actually go about delegating. And um, we looked at that. And we also looked at uh, motivation, right? And I think that is where we stop. We need to motivate People. When it comes to dealing with people, we need to be able to motivate them. What does it mean to uh, motivate? Okay, it means to give reason or provide reason for a per, for people or per person to do something. Okay, it's about getting people to move and act. Okay, maybe uh, they are not. Uh, they are not. There is. They have stopped. For some reason, or they've slowed down for some reason, or they paused, um, you know, serving or working uh, towards the goal, right? They've stopped. They're slowing down, uh, so they need to be motivated. Which means that we need to again provide the reason, maybe refresh the vision and provide the reason for them to again pick up and pick up speed and carry out the tasks. So that's. You know that's motivation, right? Uh, it's like uh, uh, giving people a pep talk at times. Right? Uh, I'm sure you've seen uh, in, in, in a in a cricket match or any sport, people just you know just huddling around the captain. And uh, I know if you've been watching the IPL, that happens at the start of the game. You know there is the whole team that is going to be fielding, bowling. They are just uh, you know around and then. Captain gives them the strategy and says, "Okay, you know, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this well. We're going to give, win this game." Right? There's a, there's a motivational talk or a pep talk uh, for the team. So we need to be able to motivate the team, give them reasons um, and uh, reasons to take action, reasons to move, so that they do the task. Okay, so. Um, we looked at four things when it comes to motivating people. Um, limit, first, firstly, we said, you know, we cannot always give them a, a difficult task or long hours to put in. Uh, we cannot always do that. So you give them an end date saying, you know, this is a start date, this is the end date. And during this time, we want to put in maximum effort so that we get this output. Right? We need to be able to you know, maybe you know we need to work long hours. Maybe we need to put in more effort so that we can get this output by this date. So maybe the next two weeks are going to be very crucial. You know, or you know, you're preparing for a game. You know, then this month is going to be crucial because we are preparing for this big game. Right? Get our strategies right, exercising, 
food, every diet, everything, you know, whether it's in sports or you know work or ministry, you know it's the same way. Like mm-hmm. you're motivating the team to put in something extra so that the output will be good, right? So, um, so in doing so, we cannot always extend that 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 extra that they want to they need to put in. Right, so you can give them uh, an end date or a or a you know the the uh, time for that for that extra that you want out of people. Right. Um, secondly, we also said you know if we share in the effort, there are times when we cannot. Right? Maybe there are some days that we can. If we share in that effort and share in that sacrifice, then that will motivate people also. If we share the load. And uh, you know, I was talking about how when I was in sales, the regional manager would would come with us for those uh, for those difficult customers, for those big customers, um, and having him with us would really motivate us. And knowing that he's there to support us, right? So sharing in that load, taking on some of the responsibilities, um, would really motivate people. And uh, the third thing is to uh, to appeal to the values. Right or appeal to the sense of rewards, you know, uh, enable people to see the end result. Okay, what is that reward? What is that? Uh, um, you know, what what uh, give them that sense of belonging and and enable people to focus on that, right? To look at those values, to look at the rewards, and uh, and that will motivate as well. <clears throat> well, some people say we need to, you know, you know, to put some fear. You know, if you do not do this, then this is the consequence, right? Uh, well, that will also motivate people, you know, because people don't want to, uh, you know, face the consequence of, uh, you know, not doing something. You know, some people always say, you know, if you don't do this, you won't get paid, or if you don't do this, um, you can't continue in the job, right? Now that will also, it's a negative motivator, uh, like it will motivate people to do it because they don't want to lose the job or they don't want to lose the money or the pay right but that can be only for a short term and you don't want to do that right uh, you don't want to lose the person uh, but and uh, you know end up them finishing the task but losing them you know as a person as a team member so um, Yes, we need to communicate the consequence of not doing certain things, and that will help. But do it in a positive manner, right? Okay, <clears throat> then uh, give people multiple reasons, right? Even we, when we achieve something, when we do finish this, what are what is going to happen, right? And that will always motivate people. Um, so we looked at another word, which is inspiration. Okay, if you remember inspiration, so we can, uh, you know, enable people or motivate people. We can also inspire. We need to also inspire people. Right? Inspiration uh, it involves changing the way people think and feel about themselves. Um, let me just put this here. Involves changing the way people think and feel about themselves so that they want to take positive actions. It taps into people's values and desires. So this works for the long term. We are ins- inspiring people. Uh, it's inspiring, you know, appeals to their, what they aspire, they want to be. Right. Um, so when people are inspired, then they, uh, you know, they, they 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 become self starters or you know they they do the tasks themselves you don't have to be there to to push constantly push and monitor because they are inspired to do it right so here are some things how we can inspire people firstly like paul says to timothy you know be an example okay be an example <clears throat> so he, he says in first timothy chapter 4 um and verse 12 okay so that's uh first timothy chapter 4 and verse 12 okay so he says be an example you know he, he says be an example let no one despise your youth but be an example to the believers 
okay now so, uh, the believers were different people different gender right the men uh, they were older men they were younger people so to all of them right be an example so no matter how you know what the composition of your team is be an example to them and he lists certain things you know be an example in word um in conduct in love in spirit in faith in purity in all these you know in the words that you speak in in uh, in your behavior <clears throat> in your love in expression of love in in spirit you know in in, in really your motives and attitudes in um, in faith right to the your, your lifestyle of faith in purity everything to do with character and right be an example so the thing is we inspire people by our example like when we when we when we say that uh we need people to be at a certain place at a certain time we need to be, we want them to be punctual we want their work to be excellent and we want them to behave in a certain way you know uh, like we don't want people to gossip and etc be an example okay so when people see the change that we want them to have in our own lives okay that change that we want them to see in their lives when they see it in our lives and they see it consistently then they are inspired to be um, like you know inspired to be like us right so be the change that you want to inspire in people um, share share testimonies share uh, success stories share what you know what can happen uh, when ministries or when you are you know uh, let's say you know at maybe we are um, share stories of uh, how what ministries have done what churches have done or what organizations have done and the kind of success they have achieved um, and why they achieved you know share those uh, instances or uh, or those uh, stories right you share them so uh, with with people right so this is what is possible so what happens is when when you share the stories it it brings uh, people uh, to the fact that okay this is real and this is possible right maybe in their mind they're thinking okay i don't want to do it this is not possible this is uh, you know this this is this will never work so when we share those stories inspiring stories uh, it brings them to the point of uh, you know believing and also knowing b- believing that it's possible right okay so how do we uh, uh, inspire first we said you know you be the change like you be the example secondly you share those uh, success stories you share those real stories of how things were done how things were achieved how things were accomplished that will inspire people right and uh, thirdly um, have strong set of values and uh, um, and and appeal to the values in people as well right so um, which means that you know values like timeliness excellence uh, moral integrity you know, we we you we create those values right we create that um in the organization or in the team by esteeming those things esteeming those qualities like right? you say okay this is what we want right you recognize those values and uh, <clears throat> and model those values for them right so when we do that then you appeal to those things you know let your work be excellent let your work be timely let your work be uh, of this nature right let your ministering be like this let your life be like this in character and purity so we appeal to those values and we inspire them okay. um there's two other things when it comes to inspiration is to to be able to trust okay um we are empowering people when we trust them right um yes first of all when we choose people we need to of course have make sure that they are the right people uh and so that they are trustworthy but also when we actually trust them right when we when we give them responsibility when we trust them with uh, with a the task 
then uh, you know you are what are we telling them we are telling them that you know you are you are worthy of trust we believe that you can uh, do this you are able to do this and so on and that inspires people to to move that inspires people to uh, move to action as well okay so uh, when we trust people and uh, the, the last thing is to challenge right well it means that go beyond enable people to stretch beyond what they are doing right now okay challenge the people uh, saying okay this is possible but then you need to stretch now you need to uh, put in that extra you need to stretch so challenge people and then when they when they realize that uh, you know that it is possible and they they will also stretch uh, and exert and put in effort maybe ex- uh, stretch with their creativity and stretch with the sacrifice and that will also exceed uh, you know what they thought was possible that will help them to achieve that and that will inspire people right so we uh, motivate we inspire and uh, we we do this uh, when it comes to managing people when it comes to dealing with people so we don't do it as a way to manipulate we need to understand that okay so manipulating is uh, you know it's like you putting a reward in front of them you know i'm sure you've seen that i thought i should get that picture i, I don't have it the picture of you know someone riding a, like a horse or a or a donkey and uh, putting a carrot in front of it like a, like a stick and in that stick there's a carrot that is uh, that is always there so the, the animal is moving forward to get the carrot and and uh, you know so don't manipulate in that manner rewards motivation inspiration should not be to manipulate people but really you know it should enable it should come it should enable them it should be beneficial for them right so um because you're enabling them to uh, to achieve uh, you know uh, achieve their tasks and enabling them to or giving them the reason to be able to go beyond their best and so a sense of accomplishment and achievement um uh, in and when one wants when one uh, one per, one is able to achieve something there is a sense of satisfaction you know i'm, I'm sure many times we we do a task and just the fact that we've completed the task and we've done it well gives us a sense of um a sense of accomplishment a sense of contentment we're satisfied right and and uh, so so that is what we bring about when we motivate and inspire uh, and reward and recognize people for their tasks right um so um so that's the thing so when it comes to motivating okay probably this is uh, i think this is quite nice i'll just tell you um when there's an immediate short term and specific goal we motivate right we motivate give reasons uh, and, uh, and and the things that we saw but when you want to shape people's identity and their long term aspirations we need to inspire okay so both are both go hand in hand both are required when it's uh, when you're leading excuse me when you're leading people right okay so any questions or anything that you want to clarify uh here you looked at motivation inspiration um have you tried motivating people what were some what were some challenges some difficulties that you faced excuse me any challenges that you faced maybe in motivating people um or in terms of delegation what were some difficulties that you faced uh maybe we you know anything that you want to talk about <clears throat> any real life situations anything okay no doubts nothing at all 
Okay. 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 Then let's look at uh, the next one, which is uh, um, which is evaluation. Okay. So why do we need to evaluate right, people's tasks, people's work? Um, in other words, in 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 uh, work organization, uh, they call it work appraisal, like performance. Um, appraisal woman's appraisal which means uh, it's the review of your work okay so work review to do this uh, maybe twice a year or maybe yeah maybe uh, three or four times a year you know some organizations do it every every quarter right Jan January February March end of March there's a review uh, April, May, June, end of June. There's again a review. You know how um, how's the work? Like, what is the what is happening? Uh, are we moving towards what we said that we would accomplish? You know what is the effort put in? Uh, is there any difficulty? Anything at all? Right. So we look at uh, uh, evaluate the work. We do a review. We stop and find out. Okay, how are things going? Are uh, is there a uh, so this work review appraisal is uh, is very important uh, for us to know that um, things are going well or for us to find out uh, you know what is not going as well as planned right uh, what are some challenges what are some things and then so this regular appraisals would really help the person help the team would uh, and as a, as a leader uh, would help you uh, help us to know where things stand okay if there's a problem we know there is a problem and what we should do in order to uh, solve that problem or difficulty so uh, it helps to have an appraisal but an appraisal is possible only when we are clear about the tasks Okay, so and in the beginning, we've uh, we've shared with the person. Okay, this is what you're responsible for. These are your tasks, and um, and this is what we need to do this year. Okay, this year we uh, we want to do these tasks. Uh, we, we it could be okay. We want to reach so many people. Okay, or we want to do so many outreaches. Uh, we want to maybe. Uh, write so many books, right? Or uh, we want to create so many um, videos, teaching videos, or uh, or we want to write so many songs, something like that. So, um, so an appraisal or evaluation will be, you know, at the end of three months, you know, you you sit down and you check and you see, you know, how are things. Have you been able to move towards the completion of the tasks? What are the difficulties? Okay, maybe illness, maybe lack of resource, lack of training, uh, lack of people, right? All those reasons will come up, or, or actual reasons will be, or difficulties uh, will, will come up during a review. Okay, so we're able to take course correction. Okay, so course correction meaning, okay, what is it? What are those changes that I need to make? Okay, so it means that if you are going from point A to point B, and we are actually, instead of going to B, we are actually going towards C, right? So we need to get back to B. Okay, but C is this way. We need to get back to B. So what are those things that we need to do? Okay, so maybe the people need training. Maybe we need, you know, uh, more, one more person. So the workload is more. Um, maybe there are, you know, certain tools that are required, right? Certain equipment that is required, certain tools that are required. Uh, maybe there are some things that need maintenance that need to, that needs repairing, right? Because of which it's slowing down. Or maybe it was just negligence, okay? That could be the thing too, you know, I've not been doing my work, okay? I need to do this amount of work every day in order to go to point B, but if I don't put in that amount of work, 
then I will obviously not be able to reach point B, right? So, so you you can have that conversation and say, you know, you're actually not, uh, you know, not, not putting in the work. Why is this? You know, why is the sudden lack of interest or lack of, um, you know, effort? Uh, why is this lack of interest? Why? And the person might say, okay, maybe you know, illness, some difficulties in the family, or maybe genuinely say, you know, I, I think I've had enough, right? I I don't think I, I'm cut out for this job, maybe, or for this role in ministry. Maybe I need to do something else, right? Or various reasons, I need to be trained, you know, to, to do this particular thing. I need some training, and I feel that I need, I'm, I'm not adequately trained. Um, and so on. So, um, so we bring in that. We're able to bring in that. Suggest those those changes, or to just simply say, you know, you need to be more disciplined. Right? Uh, you're starting your work late, and therefore, uh, you know, the rest of the team is not there. And uh, you, by the time you contact them, they've already left, or they are on to doing something else. So you need to change your way of working and all that. So that happens when there's a uh, evaluation. The evaluation also helps with reward, right? Recognition. Okay, so when we evaluate and see that the person has done a good job, a great job, then we can reward accordingly. Okay, uh, like Paul, uh, again, to Timothy, he says, you know, let the elders who rule well, you know, this is chapter 5, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Okay, So how can we know that the person is doing a good job, they're ruling well, and they're laboring, right? Especially those who labor in word and doctrine. How can we know unless we have a system to review, uh, a process to evaluate? Or just a simple thing that we do it from time to time. Maybe it's just a meeting. And you talk about it. That's that's again a process of evaluating, right? So unless we have that, we will not know. Unless we observe, we will not know. So um, <clears throat> so this can be something that that's part of you know the team. That's part of uh, the process, and you lay it down, and you can do it uh, from time to time, right? At regular intervals, you you are able to evaluate, and you're able to reward um, uh, accordingly. In the right manner, you know, rather than doing it arbitrarily, right? In the sense, okay, I just feel that uh, this person is doing a good job. No, it's it's kind of, you know when you actually uh, evaluate, only then we will know that whether the person is doing a good job or not, right? When you see, okay, what is the in this area? You know, you have ten areas to look after. Okay, what about uh, you know area number one, area number two, area number three? What has happened then? You know, when you'll have, we will have a clear picture, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a very accurate picture of the effort put in, of the result. Right? Otherwise, it'll just be our feeling. You know, this is a nice person, and I feel that he or she is putting in effort. I've seen that person work. Uh, whenever I see that that person is working, that may not be accurate. Right? And uh, because we're dealing with people. <clears throat> It needs to be, you know, you know, we we are dealing with multiple people, maybe, right? Maybe there are five uh, who need to be maybe recognized and rewarded or evaluated. So we need to have a unbiased, unprejudiced, unbiased process. So which means that uh, okay, we have that process of checking, evaluating, and that's the process same for everyone, right? Um, so I'm sure you must be learning more in church administration, right? On this performance appraisal, uh, you 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 have that course, right? And you're doing that course right now, uh, or was it last year? Um, church administration. Um, is it is it uh, this semester? Are you doing it right now? Yeah, in this semester. This semester, right? Okay, yeah. So yeah, so the uh, the details of it, you know, you 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 know, you see that uh, in in that course, right? Okay. 
So let's uh, look at you know, one one more thing when it comes to people. When it comes to people, again, you know, based on this evaluation, um, maybe you know you realize that this person is really not aligned to the vision, and this person's efforts are are not really helping the organization. Right, and uh, this person, even after repeated conversations, uh, repeated reminders, they are not willing to put in that effort. It's not that we have not given the tools, we have not given the training, we have not given the resources, we have given all that, but despite that, they simply do not want to. You know, maybe they are not interested. Maybe their their calling is something else. Maybe their interests are something else. Maybe they do need to do something different in life. So we need to let them pursue that. Let them go. Okay, uh, and it's a difficult decision, obviously, because they might have been there for some time, and uh, we need to let them go. We need to have that hard conversation, talk with them to say, see. This has happened, and we have had this conversation before. That if you know you're not able to do this, or if you're not interested, if you're not doing that, you're not seeing change, then there has to be consequences. Right? We need to we need to let you go. So we need to be able to have that hard conversation, or maybe there is a role change, saying you know you don't have to do this anymore. Okay, so out of those ten things that you're doing, we, have, you know, these five things you haven't been doing, right? And even after repeated things, even after, so take it away. We don't want those five things to suffer. Right? We are accountable to God. Um, he's the one who's entrusted this to us. So these five things. Uh, should not suffer. So I'm going to give it to another person who can, who is interested, and who can do it. But you look at only these five things. But the remuneration, right, the the salary, will have to, you know, proportionately we'll have to reduce that because it's uh, you now we are we are now removed some of those responsibilities, removed some of those tasks. So initially, when we when we uh, took you in for for this particular role, it was for these things. So your reward or your or your salary was also you know, keeping in mind that you will do these ten things. But now that we have removed these five, we need to also you know uh, sufficiently reduce the amount of salary so that it's realistic. Okay. Um, so that is again uh, another conversation. You know, maybe maybe that person is good in other things, certain other things, and then uh, you know, just because you're reducing or taking off that responsibility, maybe you know their remuneration can be proportionately reduced, and they can continue. Okay, so things like that. This conversation, whether it's to letting go or whether there's a change in the role, um, you know, that is something that we need to uh, have that conversation as a result of that appraisal. Okay, so this also it's it's good to you know it's it's good to uh, clarify it's good to have it uh, you know have it uh, discuss or have that thing discussed with the person. Now, you know uh, I know in secular organizations it's it's very very clear right it's there there in black and white and we can do the same thing uh, with the ministry also uh, because we are. Holding the person accountable to the task, and we can do it in a you know uh, in an honourable manner. It doesn't have to be you know shouting and complaining and screaming and and uh, all negativity and uh, you know people f you know feeling hurt and and uh, broken and all. It doesn't have to be that way, right? It it can be in a very that is the importance of having a system in place right we we have that process in place people understand it now understand the consequence of not uh, not doing that okay uh, if they need training we provide all that right so we do that to help people succeed okay when it comes to managing people we do all that to help 
people succeed and be the best at what they can do. However, when that does, that does not happen, we also, you know, have a process in place, have people understand that process and do that, carry it out, saying this will have to be followed <clears throat> because certain things were not met. And we do it in an honorable manner, right? Um, and yes, there will always be, uh, you know, there will always be emotions. There will always be, you know, uh, uh, things, challenges that way. But we can always talk about it and uh, discuss it and agree on things and uh, and do it in an honorable manner, right? Uh, okay. Okay, then um, yeah, some sometimes um, we yeah we just need to understand. You know, I'm on page thirty four that <clears throat> while we are doing this, we are you know we are dealing with the resources of the organization. We are being accountable to what has been entrusted to us. You know, this is also a sign of accountability. Okay, accountability to God with the um, resources that he has given us right? uh, you know um, sometimes we think that um, especially when it comes to you know uh, maybe a, a ngo or uh, or a ministry ministry uh, or a, or any organization of that sort that that anything is okay right anything is okay and uh, we cannot let people go uh, or we cannot have this conversation with people, but that's uh, that's actually false. Or we should not look for productivity, right, or excellence in people. That's false because you know we see that um, you know you know we we see this in John chapter fifteen. It says that every John chapter fifteen and verse two, uh, the Lord is saying, "I'm the wine, and my Father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away." And every branch branch that bears fruit, he prunes that he it may bear more fruit. Okay, so he's doing something so that it bears more fruit. Okay, so that um, that branch is fruitful. So what is it? It means that the father is actually looking for fruit, and he's doing something to cause that branch to bear more fruit. Okay, um, but look at that. Every branch that does that does not bear fruit, he takes away, takes away. You know, but it is after uh, doing that process of causing that branch to bear fruit. He does the process of pruning, um, does something to the plant so that it bears more fruit. But even after that, if there's no fruit, that branch that does not bear fruit is is taken away. Okay, so. Um, so that, that that's the thing, you know, that, that the Father Himself is looking for fruitfulness. Okay, so in ministry to uh, to expect fruitfulness, to expect productivity, okay, is not wrong at all. Right? We are we as stewards are being accountable. Our health, the word steward itself is right. Um, all these resources are given, like time, money, people. Right, uh, are you know we are accountable. We are accountable if we are accountable for how we should use our time, and we make the best use of it. If we are accountable, held accountable for how we are, you know, uh, with the resources like materials and money and and other things, physical things. Uh, if we are held accountable for that, yes, we are. In the same manner, even when it comes to people. And uh, you know, which are again precious people who are precious and resources, and we also are accountable for how and what they produce and how we deal with people, right? So uh, people cannot be. We need to look for fruitfulness, productivity, and uh, and it doesn't mean that you know just because people are there, we you know we will keep rewarding irrespective of what they do okay if they don't do if they're not interested if they don't come if they are you know not obeying the rules if they're not then obviously we cannot keep rewarding because we are accountable 
you will be held accountable. Okay, so we need to understand that, okay, and not be fearful and not have a, you know a misapply agape, right? Sometimes we misapply agape, and therefore we don't want to correct. We misapply agape, and we don't want people to you know, tell people stop. Okay, what you're doing is wrong. We misapply that. Okay, so, um, so the right application of it is truth with love. Right. Uh, speak the truth with love. So truth sometimes does not appeal to people. It's not people are not comfortable with it, saying that hey, this is what you're doing, and what you're doing is wrong. You need to change. But you say it in love, say it firmly. Uh, and we need to do that, right? So okay. So we looked at people. We looked at uh, several things. Um, uh, uh, you know, right from getting people organized, uh, delegating, motivating, evaluating, and even, you know, when it comes to letting go. Okay, so um, so I hope that this is uh, useful, this is helpful, and once you start leading, uh, or maybe you're already at the leadership position, like some of you are, uh, you can, you know, we need to use this, you'll find this valuable using these skills. Okay, so we'll stop here. Uh, next class, we'll look at another important aspect, which is resolving conflicts. Okay, when it comes to managing people, it's an extension of this session. You know, when it comes to managing people, definitely you can be assured that there will be conflict, or uh, you know, the uh, it's it's um, it's a given, right? And because of stress, because of you know, uh, people's opinions, different things. There are conflicts of various nature. Okay, um, so you might say, oh, in church, can there be conflicts? Of course, <laughs> we see the Corinthian church is a great example where there was you know division and so. On. But we need to have the uh, skill to resolve conflicts and to have a plan. Okay, how do we go about resolving these conflicts? So we cannot say that there will be no conflicts. So I will not have a plan. You know, there will be conflicts when it comes to people, right? Um, if you just have two people, that's enough for some kind of a conflict. So we need to have a plan. How do I resolve conflicts? How do I go about resolving conflicts? What are you know the types of conflicts, and how can I go about resolving? Can I have a plan? Can I have a strategy to resolve the conflict? So this will be very, very useful again because we are dealing with people as as much as we need to motivate and inspire, delegate. To be able to resolve is also something. Resolve conflict is also something uh, that we need to learn. Okay, so we look at it in uh, the next class uh, next Thursday. Okay, thank you. God bless. Have a great week. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir.